What is up guys, it's Pierre and today I'm in Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh City also known as Saigon and I'm gonna show you not one, not two but 20 things to do in a city and we start straight away at a popular place number one, the Cathedral of Saigon and the central post office. Located in the heart of Saigon in District 1, the 58 meters high cathedral has been built during the second half of the 19th century. And fun fact, all the building material used were imported from France. The beautiful central post office is right next to the cathedral. Unlike some people think this building hasn't been designed by Gustave Eiffel but by Aldrey Foulou. It's still a functioning post office but they also sell a lot of souvenirs that you can find somewhere else at a better price. Number two, the Tanding Church, and as you can guess, also called the Pink Church. That church is located in a district 3, and why it's pink? Well, I'm sorry, but I don't know. By the way, I didn't rank those places from the one I like the most to the one I like the least. It's just in a random order. Enough churches, now it's time to show you some temples. Number three, the Jade Emperor Pagoda. This beautiful pagoda is all painted in pale red and has a roof made with emerald green tiles. Here, the combination of the light from the sun and the incense smoke make it a paradise for photographers. This pagoda is located in District 1 and yes, that's the pagoda that Obama visited in 2016. Number 4 on the list, the Ba Tian Hao Temple. It's located in Cholun, which is the Chinatown of Saigon, and this temple is dedicated to the goddess Mazu, the Queen of Heaven. Here, the roof is decorated with colorful small porcelain statues that represent scenes from a 19th century Chinese city. And guys, fun fact, on the 23rd day of the 3rd month of the Vietnamese lunar calendar, the main statue of the goddess Mazu is taken out of the temple and paraded through Chinatown. Guys, most of the tourists will miss that place when they visit Saigon. But will you? Number 5, the Van Phat Temple, also known as the 10,000 Buddhas. That place is kinda hidden at the end of a narrow alley and it can be hard to find. If I'm not wrong, this temple has 5 floors and when you first step in, it just seems like any other temple. So take the stairs, visit all floors as they're all a bit different until you arrive to the last floor. Here, be ready to be amazed as you're gonna enter in a room with almost 10,000 Buddha statues. No joke, I count it all one by one. I'm kidding, I haven't done that. Guys, if there is one temple that you must visit here in Saigon, this is number 6, the Bulong Pagoda. And this is by far my favorite one. This pagoda is the only one in Vietnam with this kind of architecture. It's just a pure beauty that reminds me of the style of Thailand and Myanmar temples. As you can see, you can go to the top floor at the base of the beige shaped dome, where you will have a 360 view of the surroundings. You can also enter inside the dome where you will find a small laying Buddha statues and discover that the walls are beautifully painted. Here you also have many sanctuaries, but what I really like here besides the beauty of the place is how quiet it is, it's so peaceful. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's a bit far from the center, maybe 15 to 20 k's, but guys, I swear, it really worth the drive. If you want to see the modern side of the city, then number 7, Vietnam Central Park. And by the way, it's here that you got the highest tower of Vietnam, Landmark 81. Just right there. You can come here to do some shopping or eat in one of the nice restaurants inside the shopping center. But what I like the most is to go for a stroll in a park on the opposite of the tower. And this is so quiet during quick days. Seriously, just a minute ago I was at Bulong Pagoda, it's so peaceful now here. Am I still in Saigon? 
Shopping at the landmark 81 is a bit too fancy. Okay, so now let's try the most popular market among the tourists. Number 8, the Bentang Market. Here, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Nowadays, this place is a tourist attraction. They sell a lot of souvenirs, fake clothes and shoes, blah, blah, blah. And if you want to buy something there, be ready to bargain hard. Another place with a way less tourist but even more beautiful, number 9, the Bintay Market. This building has been under renovation for a while but now it's as beautiful as it used to be. But when I was there to film, the place has just opened to get the store's holder registration. So I'm sorry but I can't show you more than this. I guess you have to come here yourself to see more of it. Number 10, Le Kong Kiu Street, also called Antique Street. Here, 90% of the shops are selling antiquities. This street is located in the heart of Sego in District 1, but it's surprisingly quiet. Not many motorbike drive through this 300 meters long street. Here, be careful, everything you see is not a real antiquity. There are a lot of replicas. And be aware that in Vietnam it's illegal to export antiquities. Guys, we are now at a night market and this one is a bit special. Number 11, the Nguyen Chai Street Night Market. If you want cheap stuff, your best option for fashion, shoes and accessories is here. The market takes place on both sides of the street and it's a mix between street vendors and proper shops. So if you want, you can walk along the street to have a good look at everything. But if you're lazy, just drive your motorbike slowly through the street. And when you see something you like, you just stop and go to have a look. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, Saigon is a noisy and chaotic city. So, if you need a quiet place, number 12, the Levantam Park. Actually, there are many parks in Saigon, but this one is pretty central, not far from the Pink Church. It's clean and during the day, it's always quiet. In this park, you have a lot of equipment to do your workout, which is cool. But guys, after 5 p.m., this park gets packed of people and it gets noisy. But it's still a nice place to hang out. For the ones who love to visit museum, we are now at number 13, the Vietnam History Museum. The museum covers the large period from the prehistoric time to the Nguyen Dynasty. It's all divided in sections, arranged in a chronological order. The museum is open daily from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. and from 1.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. The entrance fee is 30,000 dong and to be allowed to use your camera, you will have to pay an extra 40,000 dong. Number 14, another museum, but that one is very sad. It's the War Museum. Outside there are a few military planes, vehicles, bombs and other on display. And inside you will find a collection of posters, photographs, weapons, bombs and many other things. Don't forget to read as many captions as you can as it will help you to understand more the terrible part of the Vietnamese history. By the way, the entrance fee is 30,000 dong. I guess that now you must be starving, so number 15 the street food you can't miss the street food in saigon i personally love vietnamese food and here in ho chi minh city you have a wide range of street food like the famous pho com tam ban seo just to name a few with all this choice it's difficult to know what to choose so follow your instinct and get the first that looks yummy for you and me as french one of my favorite is the banh mi i love it Saigon, it's packed of coffee shops, so number 16, you must try Vietnamese coffee. And I'm talking like in a random coffee shop, not like Starbucks, forget Starbucks, just a random shop. To drink coffee is really part of Vietnamese and Saigonese culture. You can have it hot or with ice, black or with condensed milk. Price start on the street as low as 10,000 dongs, but it can be a lot more expensive if you go in a fancy coffee shop. Now number 17, Turtle Lake at night. And why at night? Because as soon as the sun goes down, this place goes from empty to packed of people. Here it's mainly teenagers and young people who come to talk and eat some street food. Now, don't be disappointed, this place is on a lake and there is no turtle. It's actually a roundabout, so be careful when you cross the road. Number 18, the view of the second skyline from the Fumi Bridge. Usually it's awesome, but today it's kind of cloudy, but well, it's gonna give you an idea of what I can get. This is the only place except some private buildings where you can have a full view on the Saigon skyline. There is a pedestrian pass, so don't worry, it's not dangerous to go there. And the best time to go is before sunset, as most of the time the sky is beautiful at this time.
guys, I love rooftop bar, so I have to mention one here in Saigon, number 19, the Glow Sky Bar. Located in District 1, just a short walk away of the Cathedral of Saigon, this bar has an amazing view on all the tall buildings around, the park of the Independence Palace and some other old buildings. This is a fancy place so do not expect cheap drinks, but you have the happy hour from 5pm to 8pm where you can get 50% off on drinks. And guys, number 20, the Starlight Bridge. What attracts the people is this bridge with an illuminated waterfall, but not only. It's a quiet place and it's nice to come here for a walk by the lake. Many couples like to hang out here. You think there are only 20 things to do in Saigon? Wrong! You also have the Ziaklam Pagoda, the Nguyen Hue Working Street, the City Hall, the Opera House, the second sky deck in the Pitexco Tower, the Independence Palace, the infamous Bouvian Street, and so much more. Now, as crazy as it sounds, forget everything I told you in this video, and if you want to discover the real beauty of Segon, just get lost, walk street after street, and enjoy the real Segonese local life. Thanks for watching, and guys, if you don't want to miss anything, don't forget to subscribe, because there is a lot of videos coming up soon.